Hey everybody, before we start this podcast, as always, I gotta give a shout out to our sponsor for this week. It is, you guessed it, Haven Cottage Investments, alright? They have the knowledge, they have the power, they have the tools and techniques that can put you in a better place in life. You wanna buy a house? You wanna sell a house? You need to rent out some property? You need to find some tenants? Anything at all, Haven Cottage Investments can do. Haven Cottage Investments. I can say words properly. Everything you need to get in touch with them is all in the description below. You need an email address. You need a phone number. It's all good. Again, if you want to start your future off right, you got to listen. Take some advice from a 22-year-old. Get in touch with Haven Cottage Investments. All right. Well, that's enough out of me. Let's get to the show. podcast podcast all right now we're live okay good so uh <laughs> what we were just talking about about how blake wants to kill everyone in his household <laughs> that is stricken from the record uh no one will hear anything about no, that all, all incriminating evidence deleted all of it is gone um anyways welcome back to the one more movie review podcast <laughs> um this is the second episode and uh, we would have had a larger cast today but uh, two people bailed and i hate them for it um it's actually no like okay it's it's all well and good because uh, i did ask because you know when you're scheduling things i'm like okay i get it things come up whatever you don't right. anticipate whatever just give me like at least you know a couple of days or yeah or something yeah exactly get, just give me a heads up don't be like hey it's an hour before i'm not gonna make it because then i'm just like <laughs> well shit I mean, honestly, it's it's not bad. Um, my expectations, I, I feel like, for the most part, I've had experience doing just the one-on-one, and for the most part, they've ended up pretty well. So um, that's whatever. But I have an expectation of, okay, here's how the day is going to pan out. And then you're like, psych, this is not going to happen. And then Keeps you on your toes. It, uh, I don't want to be on my toes, though. I want to <laughs> yeah, be on my feet. Yeah, you want flat-footed. I want to be flat-footed. Sitting down. Exactly. Gotcha. I, I want to know what's going on. Um, anyways. Uh, the, not the point of the show. It's not the bitch fest. It is the uh, movie review. And this week, uh, if you have not guessed by the title, uh, we have done the Captain Underpants movie. I'm so excited. <laughs> Honestly, I saw like the trailers for it a long time ago. Whenever it was first, like, look, we're doing a Captain Underpants movie, and I was just like, I have to see it. And then it came out in theaters, and then I didn't see it. And then it came out in theaters again, and I didn't see it. And then time you and, passed. You and everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, oh, actually, uh. Um, we're going to take a quick break. One second. I need to look up something and I don't want to just like have everyone going. Doo, doo, I can look it up. All right. Okay. Well then fine. Blake, uh, tell me how box much, office. Yeah. Box office and stuff like that. Because I'm pretty sure. Sh- Cause with like a, I, I feel like for a comedy animated movie, that's not Disney Pixar getting like a, what was it? 6.3 or something on 6.3 IMDb. on IMDb. I think that's a relatively solid, especially since it's technically new. I mean, sure. Uh, the books, but disclaimer, uh, I have read the books. Blake says he's read the books. Um, I have read the books. <laughs> but granted, I was like in the fourth or fifth grade when oh, I read them. I'm not, yeah, no, I've I'm read not them. still pondering over <laughs> toilet monsters. Yeah, I read them last week just in preparation. I'm just oh. kidding. I have not. Um, it's been a while. Yeah, no, it's been a while. But but um, that was definitely like, you know, kids were reading Harry Potter and whatever. And I was like, Captain <laughs> Underpants! <laughs> And, you know, Captain Underpants and Super Diaper Baby, which, honestly, if they're going to make a second movie, they're going to have to include Super Diaper Baby. Of course. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, I thought it was really uh, interesting movie, what they did, but we'll get that in a second. But, Blake, do you got the numbers for yeah, us? Yeah, budget, $38 million estimated. Uh-huh. Opening weekend, $23,851,539. Oof. That was USA as of June 2nd. Oof. And then, as of July 14th. Uh, gross was seventy one million one hundred sixty three thousand one hundred thirteen dollars. That's worldwide or in America? That is USA. Wow. So, okay. So just doubled their budget. That's that's a almost, success. Yeah. We're gonna say they pretty much doubled their budget. Sure. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So so definitely a success. So um, there will be pumping out as even at the end of the movie. Uh, there will be there is a more or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I, and I'm glad. I, I thought, um, just kind of surface level for now, I thought the writing was kind of funny. And mm-hmm. it, it definitely kind of had that Pixar charm where, you know, it is definitely take your kids to the movie, whatever, whatever. Yep. But then you'll have the jokes for the parents kind mm-hmm. of slipped in there. Um, 
you know, like the the the, the one about the turtle. He's like, I keep w- the turtle and I have gotten really close, <laughs> and I I wear him everywhere, even in the shower. <laughs> and and the, the turtle, turtle has cries. like a little eye. Yeah. <laughs> it, so just those those kind of like mature. Sure, I mean it's still kind of like lowbrow humor, but it's still you know. I was like laughing constantly in Blake teacher, was the teacher salary joke. The, the teacher salary joke, very uh very on topic and very relevant for today. Uh yeah, no, I, I thought I thought the writing was good. Um definitely I really liked like growing up reading the uh the like do we call them comics? They're books, comics, graphic comic books. I say books. Books, sure. We'll say books. So uh growing up with the books, Epi- I kind of epics. If epics you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, gosh, how many books are there? There's like ten, I think now. Are 10, there 11. 10 yeah, Underpants yeah. Started in '97, I believe, and they actually the last book came out in 2015. I, I I saw I, I think I stopped reading earlier than that, but um, yeah, the most recent is 2015, I believe. Um, but yeah, um, growing up, I had this idea of kind of how he sounded like uh, Captain Underpants and stuff like that, and the tra la la. Mm-hmm. Um, so I Ed Helms was great, I think. Um. Captain, I think he was in there are twelve. Oh there are twelve Lord, books. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I love it. And Starting with the Adventures of Captain Underpants in yep. ninety seven, yep. and the and last the... one, Captain Underpants in the Sensational Saga of Sir Stinks a Lot. Sir Stinks a Lot. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, um, I think my first criticism, and I'm criticizing because okay, actually, before we jump into it, what what, what would be your rating? What would be my rating? What well, that's the thing. I'd have to put my mind, and I kind of went in and out where mm-hmm. I can watch a kid's movie and I can put my mind as a, you know, eight or nine year old watching sure. this movie. Sure. Um, and so as an eight and nine year old, I, you know, it's a 10 out of 10. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but as a 21 year old, I still thought, and I, I have a stupid sense of humor, sure. so I still thought it was funny. And so I would go like 7.3, 7.5, 7.3, 7.5. That's good. Yeah. Um, I'd give it an eight. I mean, it's, it's weird because, uh, you know, you have other eights and nines that are like more serious drama <laughs> movies and they're like at legitimately good acting and stuff, but you still rate this really high because it just, I don't know, it, it made me feel good. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to watch it again. Um, whenever I have time, um, I'm going to sit down and cause I feel like, um, there was a lot of kind of hints and pokes and references to the previous stuff. Mm-hmm. Granted, we'll talk about it in a little bit about, <laughs> uh, my, my gripes with it, but <laughs> um overall i thought it was a solid movie I, yeah. I think um you know in in the day and age where you know you just have pixar and disney just like cranking out Dominating. cranking out yeah exactly and just a, a lot of the kind of smaller companies their animation just kind of goes under the wayside except for elimination with the despicable me but that's true they they uh dominated. they kick that well, but but that's such a niche thing because they just have it's just they're just the uh, Despicable Me and Minions. The minions. Let me find because I don't I don't know if quick. they've I I don't know if they've done any other. Uh, but yeah, um, it, it's just, it's really nice to see just kind of a different sing. Stock. They came out with sing. Oh, that's right. The they Secret did Life sing. of Pets. Wow. The okay. Lorax. How the Grinch Stole Christmas is coming out in 2018. Okay. Wow. So, they're really kicking it they, they weren't but they're but their first the first one was De- despicable me probably um maybe give or take um, looks like hop was uh, oh, okay. nope it was despicable me despicable 2010 me. then okay. they went with hop which is like i don't some know rabbit movie okay or whatever, sure but sure whatever. all yeah. right well no okay that's awesome so so they've got the third so disney pixar and illumination studios are the the bigger guys but again illumination's oh, oh so recent which mm-hmm. is they've been kicking right. it but who did uh Zootopia, is that Disney? I think that was Disney. Yeah, okay. that was Disney. Yeah, um, but yeah. So, like I said, I, I think I think it was really awesome to see kind of, um, especially the animation style. I, yeah. I think we can jump into that first. Um, I thought I was going to be turned off by it because it, you know, you 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 have this two D kind of art style, mm-hmm. um, and they did incorporate it in the movie, uh, kind of the uh, kind of an homage to uh, the original. I believe it was David Pink Pink Pinkley. I think his name is. Pink, pinky or something i don't remember um you got me lost sure i but the, the, he's the original creator of it but oh. um but yeah so they had an homage to kind of that uh younger kid style uh stuff like that but um i don't know i really i really like the 3d style did blake you it, some of it worked like the roundness of the characters mm-hmm. i thought was a, a good touch because it kind of it added to the softer side of the movie that's true. but 
when I'm look when I'm remember reading the books, a lot of the animation or a lot of the pictures in the books mm-hmm. was very comic book sharpness, yeah. you know. And sharpness, I mean literally like sure. the, the outlines of the of the page, not not the pages. That's obviously the sharp, but like the drawings on the page were very sharp and mm-hmm. childlike drawn. Sure. And but that you're gonna get that when you put that into a movie, you're gonna get a roundness, more open right area kind of. Uh, feel to the animation but i still thought it was really fun and colorful and fun to watch you know yeah um one thing i really did like and i i i couldn't get uh whenever it, it happened I, I didn't i didn't necessarily fully get your uh reaction from it um how'd you feel when they did the sock puppet thing i i thought that was really awesome <laughs> i thought it was funny okay it was out of the blue and awesome exactly <laughs> like i thought um there was definitely more because I, I thought, you know, if, if they stayed with the traditional 3D character models and stuff like that and that kind of design, I think that would have been great. But, you know, multiple times <laughs> through the movie, they just broke that and they said, okay, here's the puppets. And then now here's just a traditional 2D design. And here's, and yeah, exactly. Like, uh, they definitely split it up. And I don't I, I thought that was very nice. Yeah. I, I, it was it kind was of a nice little touch for – I thought the puppet scene was fucking funny. The, the <laughs> puppet scene was really funny. It was really good. It was – uh, Anytime sock puppets start freaking <laughs> out and doing like the handshakes, yeah, I think that's so funny. Yeah, I don't know why. It's it's good. Um, but yeah, so uh, over overall, um, I definitely enjoyed it. It definitely wasn't like an eyesore to watch, and because mm-hmm. there are some um, some animated movies where you know I'm just kind of like okay, because I, I don't remember which studio it was, but um, I think it was this dog who wanted to be a musician or something like that. And uh, he played guitar, and I think um, what's his name, Eddie Izzard, was in the movie. But I, mm. there you go, yep. like go ahead and look it up while I look talk up. about it, either lying or not. <laughs> um, but I don't know. For me, it was just kind of weird. Um, you know, it was it, it sort of felt like a Zootopia knockoff. But I don't know. To me, I it, I guess oh Rock Dog, Rock sure who, from who? Pixar. Oh, was that Pixar? Yeah. Really? Okay. There's Luke a... Wilson, Eddie Izzard. That was twenty. Oh God. Okay. Hold on. All right. We're pausing this. There's a bug in the room. I'm. I can't. I can't Where? do this with a bug. Hold on. All right. Be right back. All right. Anyways, back. We're back. Uh, Blake killed the bug, and um, just to let everyone know, I hate bugs. I'm really terrified of them. <laughs> Always been terrified. Hate spiders. Hate bugs. Hate flies. Hate worms. Hate everything. Actually, worms are okay because they can't like crawl on me because I'll see them before they crawl on me. But um, yeah. No, I hate spiders i do understand your fear i i do understand i have an irrational fear of anything arachnid slash bug slash whatever anyways uh rock dog okay so it's pixar that was i i didn't know it was pixar yeah i I thought it was i didn't even see it i don't know yeah i think it was definitely um 2016 it got a 5.8 oh wow okay mdb let's check out the budget so but uh, yeah so budget was 60 million and total gross was nine million four hundred four thousand wow in the u.s oh my gosh what about globally absolute bomb does it have global um let me look up okay what's well, it called rock dog rock dog but anyways <laughs> um yeah it, it that animation style kind of looked a little weird um I don't know. I, I think uh, one thing I, I noticed um, as going through the previous one where we talked about the usual suspects, um, I definitely gave a lot of lot of praise and especially, you know, you know, when it's deserved, I'll give it to it. Um, I don't think I was actually critical at all of that so movie. I guess they didn't um, bring it overseas. Oh, so really? It was just was nine million four hundred. Wow. OK. Wow. OK. Well, so, that's yeah. Pixar learned its lesson. Um, <laughs> no one wants to see dogs playing guitar. Exactly. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh so I, I'm going to try and be a little more critical moving forward with this one. Um, I know it's kind of a goofy comedy, and so you like this is a how this wasn't yeah, serious it's, at all. It's kind the, of hard like, to sound like Roger Ebert, when right? To, it's a when a movie called Captain Underpants. That's true. You're right, but um, I'll, I'll going forward, I'll try and be a little more um, realistic because, like I said, I was giving praise to usual we suspects. We started off with one of your favorite movies. So. That is very true. It was We're setting the bar very high. and I Going forward, it's like, well, it's not as good as the usual suspects. Well, <laughs> that guy didn't act as well as Kevin Spacey did. <laughs> well, oh well. Um, anyway, so animation's good. Um, so the writing, dialogue, you thought it was all right? Pretty yeah, sad. it was really fast-paced, and uh-huh. I love Thomas Middleditch. I think he's so funny. Yeah. And so anytime he's in a – you know, I love even his Verizon commercials. I think they're so funny. That's true. Um, That's true. And so I thought him and Kevin Hart just being really quick with their dialogue. And I'm mm-hmm. sure that was 
towards the point of their dialogue. I right. thought it was really funny. Yeah, I was actually really surprised about Kevin Hart because I mean, usually, um, it, at least for personally for me, I think Kevin when you see Kevin Hart, it's Kevin Hart. It's you know he, and I know he hasn't really done a lot of acting movies and stuff like that, but um, you know, like the movie that he did with The Rock and um, the movie that he did with Will Ferrell, the Get Hard or whatever. Yeah. Um, he- Kevin Hart usually plays the same character exactly. in all of his movies. He, he's, so. Kevin Hart plays Kevin Hart, just right. like um, <laughs> who else? I think Kevin James always plays Kevin, Kevin James. James yeah. So um, I don't know. It was kind of weird. Uh, or it wasn't weird. I, I don't know if it was because it was an animated movie. He, I think he sunk into the role yeah. pretty well. Um, it wasn't, you know, I, I think the fact that he was a kid and he couldn't be, I'm Kevin Hart. I'm going to use language and blah, 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 blah. So he had to kind of. He had to bring himself out as a character. A little ex- bit more. Exactly. And so he definitely melted uh, where you have these two kids, you know, having the back and forth, like you said. Um, I thought it was, re- I, I thought, I thought it was executed well. Um, I think uh, going for uh, Ed Helms character um, playing Captain Underpants. I, I enjoyed it a mm-hmm. lot more than when he was uh, Principal Crumb. Uh, Crumb or Crump? I forget. Krupp. Krupp. Krupp sorry. God damn. I know. I'm not a true fan. Um, <laughs> but when he, when he was playing that, I thought it, it was a little... It, it was hard for me to like, oh, you're Captain Underpants. Oh, now you're Krupp. Oh, you're yeah. whatever. Blah, 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 back and forth. So um, I expected Krupp to have like a lot meaner... Yeah, like, that's true. ...growly voice. That's true. But it was... Ed Helms, Ed Helms was just... Yeah. from the office. It was just... <laughs> It it was Ed Helms from the Office, um, or at least when he was Captain Underpants, it was Ed Helms from yes. the Office. I think Krupp was more of Ed Helms. Stu from Hangover. Yeah, exa- I was literally yeah <laughs> from from Hangover, uh, but still Ed Helms either way. But yeah, that w- that would have been nice if he was if he kind of rah, 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 yeah. instead of just talking like a normal voice. So That's, whenever I was reading him as a kid, I always thought of Krupp as like this big mean. But yeah. When I hear Ed Helms' voice, I'm like, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's he's not as intimidating as no. what he should be, but um, but yeah. So uh, I was really surprised. There was actually uh, a few people that I didn't expect to be in the movie that mm-hmm. were uh, Christian Shaw. Definitely, I thought her weird off. Honestly, I, her voice is in anything. That's I'll true. Watch it. It's just such a funny voice. Honestly, from uh, the Toy Story three and um, Bob's Burgers, obviously. I just I fell in love with her. Like as a Have you seen Last Man on Earth? I on haven't, Fox? but I know I know she's on it and she's I really heard, funny in that. I heard yeah. Um I know my stepbrother at least watched I think the first season or something yeah. like that. But um you yeah, know, I I when when immediately the lunch lady opened her mouth, I was just like, <laughs> Oh wow, this is the movie just got like one point five <laughs> times better. Um but yeah, her and then I didn't know uh who was it Key or Peel who was or Jordan uh, Jordan, Jordan Peel was, was um, Melvin. Uh, Melvin, which I did not see that. I, I, yeah, couldn't, he, I couldn't hear it either. Ex- exactly. I yeah. could not hear it. There was another role. I'll, uh, we'll, we'll look it up after. But there was another role that I think he was also. It was. I think it was. I think it was still Jordan Peele that he was in, and I had no idea that it was him. Want to look it up? Go for it. Um, just look. I guess look up his uh, history. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was uh, some animated film or something like that. But. Um, but yeah, I thought Nick Kroll did a really good job because um, mm-hmm. he, I think he always does kind of the goofy. He was uh, in Storks. <laughs> who Nick Kroll's in Storks? No. Oh, oh. Uh, Jordan Peele was in Storks. Okay. Uh, All right. Wonderlust, Little Fockers, The Sidekick, Get Out, and Keanu. Okay, I don't know. Maybe that's, then maybe it might maybe, be something else. Maybe I, Michael Keegan. Maybe. Um, okay. Well, that's all right. It's okay. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I think Nick Kroll. Um, have you seen? Well, I forget. Blake, do you have Netflix? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Active. Okay. Um, have you seen um, Big Mouth? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Big Mouth has uh, John Mulaney, Nick Kroll. Oh, I th- I'm sold. Think I think uh, that he's also Jordan Pe- Jordan Peele's in Big Mouth. I think. Um, you might have to go to just to his IMDb page, but uh, that was a really good show, and I just. Nick Kroll, when he does just some kind of foreign off kilter, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I f- I forget the character that he plays as, but Jason that's... Mansukis is in it too. Yeah, that yeah, dude is so damn funny. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, in, when when you're watching that, I I couldn't pick him out either. So is it an animated show? Yeah, it's an animated show. Okay, cool. so yeah, well, yeah, I yeah, hopefully you'd be able to pick him out if it was a live action. So <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe the makeup is that's true. The makeup heavy. is really good. I mean, the uh, Keen Peel, all the sketches and stuff, all mm-hmm. the crazy makeup and costume right. and design <laughs> stuff like that. But um, but yeah, I I thought uh, 
I thought it was a pretty solid cast overall. Mm-hmm. Um, the police officer was Stanley. That is true. Yeah, that, that I'm sure that was just because Ed Helms <laughs> was there. Why not? And, yeah, why not? <laughs> Let's make it as much as The Office as we can. Um, that's probably why I like it is just because there's so many people from The Office. Um, but no. Um, okay, so into story. So um, obviously we can't drill it so much because what is this speed? What is that? Obviously this is just a uh, adaptation from the books into the movie. Um, as as a quote unquote preview uh, fan before who read the books, um, I thought they did a solid job. I mm-hmm. think they did take some liberties, um, which kind of makes sense um, leading into the end of the movie where that thing happens. Um, I you know Are we what? not doing I don't spoilers? Know. Are we? I, okay, so they pretty much lead <laughs> anybody into... who's not watched Captain <laughs> <laughs> Underpants yet. <laughs> uh, sorry, spoiler alert. Um, so when whenever at the end and. Uh, they defeat the toilet and all the radiation goes into the talking toilets. And so now you're going to have, if they do a second one, I know I they kind of were like, do. that would be really awesome. I, I definitely like, like with, since they doubled their uh, budget, I definitely think uh, they'll do another one. Fingers crossed. But anyways, um, whenever it's leaked into the toilets, um, they, that is the next book mm-hmm. is the attack of the talking toilets. Okay. But um, they brought in Mr. Poopy Pants and they brought Professor. In, or, I'm sorry, Professor Poopy Pants. Poopy, Professor what Poopy was his Pants. full name? BB. PP. Diarrheasis. Diarrheasis. Diarrheasteen Poopy Pants. Diarrheasteen Poopy Pants. Yeah, that was really funny. But they brought him in. They mentioned, they ever so slightly, they had the. Uh, one of the teacher, one of the the woman professor. I know she or she becomes like one of the bad guys. Mm-hmm. Um, they 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 slightly they they foreshadowed all of the characters from the book, or at least from like the first maybe five or six or seven books, mm-hmm. um, which was nice. And um, I get it doing the movie. I now because in the moment there was a scene where um, they find out uh, Professor Poopy Pants' name, and so they create the comic to make fun of him. And I kind of get why, because you can't do, you can't be so meta to like have a comic book or have a movie about the comic book, but they write the comic book while they're in the movie. Well, they did that in the, in the books though. They did were, they? Yeah. Did they make a comic about, they were right. No, not, I don't know if they actually made a comic making fun of Professor Poopy Pants, but they, that was their, they, well, yeah. said it before. My name is Harold and yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. And we love making comics. Yeah, no, I know that. And so story. Captain Underpants was the, so yeah, it was a comic about making comics. Right. But I mean, specifically, uh, since there were that, since they brought in that character, you can't have oh, here's Mister Poopy Pants or Professor Poopy Pants, and then um, we're gonna make a comic about that specific comic. They, I, yeah, they needed him. They needed Professor Poopy Pants to go off, and they needed a reason to sure. get him to be this evil Professor Poopy Pants. That's and true. So. It was kind. Of, it was kind of like an origin story a little bit. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> so because then, because then you know he doesn't get defeated or whatever, or he does technically, but he doesn't get captured or whatever. So right. he's probably maybe going to make a reappearance mm-hmm. within the traditional Poopy Pants because in the credits they they showed uh, the original the style where he's in the the legs and the mm-hmm. pants or whatever. So um, so he he might I guess remake it, but. Um, but yeah, no, I thought, um, you know, uh, in, in to respect the books, I guess, however much you can respect the books, um, <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty solid. Um, definitely. Um, they, again, like I said, I'm probably going to need to rewatch it for more of the inside jokes and right. the, oh, hey, here's the thing. Here's another thing. Um, one thing I'm not sure if they did, but in my brain, I'm like, oh, I really hope they did that. Um, they they had the actors read a few of the comic books so or the books so that they can kind of get a sense of what I, i'm sure they did i, I would hope I, so i doubt that they went into it going oh yeah <laughs> hey kevin hart's agents so <laughs> like hey kevin i got this producer on the phone he wants you to play the little black kid okay is it animated yeah it's animated okay what's it called captain underpants and then they just uh, <laughs> sure that sounds yeah. great <laughs> sounds great um you know? Yeah, no, I think uh, I don't know. For some reason, when I Thomas th- Middleditch looks like somebody that would that used that's to be true. Captain Underpants, so. probably. Um, but definitely Ed Helm just doing the draw la la, just like <laughs> he got. I think he got that pretty well. Oh yeah. Um, one thing I do like when they were adapting, and I I wasn't sure how they were gonna do it, but there were a lot of fourth wall breaks, which mm-hmm. I, I enjoy fourth wall breaks. Yeah. I don't know about you. Do I you, do. It, do. It, it it depends. If you know, like um, you don't want it in a serious drama, do you? I mean, unless it's House of Cards. That's true. If it's House of Cards, but if it like it'd be weird if 
Like sometimes it works in Family Guy, you know. That's when true. They'll break the fourth wall, and mm. you know, sit. Like one of my favorite ones was they Peter sets up this cutaway for going to a wine tasting at Michael J. Fox's house, uh-huh. and then it cuts to him just on a blank screen going, "Hi, I'm Peter Griffin." <sighs> now we were gonna show you a clip of Michael J. Fox spilling wine on my <laughs> shirt at this wine tasting, but. That that would just be in bad taste, <laughs> and they just go on for like another three minutes, and they actually show the clip. That shit's funny. Yeah, but like some of them, um, oh, what show was it? like How I Met Your Mother, which I don't like anyway. Whenever they would break the fourth, did wall they break or the fourth wall? I'm, of course they did. <laughs> Barney broke the fourth wall a, a couple of times, right? I mean, it sounds like something he would do. I I'd agree. I just, I just don't like, remember specifically. I, I, I'm not, I wasn't a fan of that show anyway. Sure. And that you just it kind of ruined those, it for you. Yeah. All right. It, yeah. No. I mean, I agree. Definitely. It you have to have it in, uh, in in good taste. And so I think with the style, especially with the intro, because the book is about hi, I'm blah blah blah, and then they they have that intro, and then they just continue on with their story. Um. So I I definitely think it was uh pretty well done. So, um. Mo- mo- going into whenever uh, Captain Underpants was fighting uh, the Professor Poop Pants with the giant talking toilet, or I guess technically at this point it wasn't talking yet, mm-hmm. but at the giant toilet. Um, but this is, sounds so stupid. We're just like <laughs> trying to like seriously talk about this, and people are already tuned out. They're just like, "What a movie What's about Captain <laughs> Underpants? What? Uh, what poop? Professor Poopy Toilet? What is this?" <laughs> um, but so uh, whenever they did the fight scene and they did the fliparama oh, and stuff yeah, like that, that great. Um, I, I love that because, um, one, they, again, literally, I think uh, three, two or three of those were straight from the book yep. whenever he was fighting the talking toilet. Except it was just, dolphins. I think, yeah, I think the dolphins, I can't, I can't <laughs> remember. I mean, honestly, the dolphins might have been in the book. I have no idea. But, um, no, I really, really, what I really enjoyed, uh, and it, it, like, I, connected with it so so hard i think one of them he rips the page that <laughs> yes, happened to me that happens happened to me all the time it happened to me and i was just <laughs> like i was like good that was they, me. <laughs> they understand they i uh, i feel accepted i the fact that like you're doing this and you're trying to go back mm-hmm. and forth back and forth <laughs> whoops dang it now i can't do it so that was that was really awesome i th- i thought that was great um so i and i mean for the most part overall you know, it, it was kind of a cheesy story, but it was still just like, it, I never, I never was just like, okay, come on, let's like, you know, fast forward through this, like, hurry up, let's get to the next part. I, I definitely think going from each section to each section, you know, with the characters, the the little love triangle between Ed Helms and Christian Shaw, <laughs> and, you know, the, the dialogue between um, the kids and stuff like that, I, I, I thought it was cool, and I enjoyed yeah. it. Um I, I do, do you agree, Blake? You're all you're yeah. It, it made me actually hate a little kid. Like <laughs> that's true. I that's true. Uh, I hated Melvin. Melvin. Melvin was He's such a little prick. He, but I mean, I feel like because and and I I don't know I if I look this up after and then it's like I was completely wrong. But I think uh, Dave uh, Pinkley or Pinkleton, I forget his name. Whatever. Yes. Um, r- was writing a lot of it kind of loosely based on child because childhood experiences so i think he did have a melvin in his class and (laughs) you know there you know he did draw comics and stuff as a kid and there was a really mean teacher and the lunch ladies were really gross and so obviously uh you pull that from life and yeah because i was that kid that would hate a kid like melvin (laughs) yeah elementary school because i was always doing bad things yeah and so when I saw Melvin, I was like, I know exactly who that kid is. I can imagine mind. exactly. You I can know imagine who a that face. Kid is, and I hate him. Yep. And he's not even real. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh no! Well, for Melvin, I knew I could picture yep, a face immediately. I know who. Bam. I can drop a name. I'm not going to drop a name because my mom says I shouldn't be mean to people. But <laughs> I can drop a name about someone, and I'm like, that was that kid. Yep. Um. But yeah, no. I I think uh th- there were there were some parts where I. It obviously was supposed to break the realm of reality, but mm-hmm. I think with Captain Underpants, you have to have a disbelief. Of it's course. not just like a, oh, these are two normal kids doing their thing. Oh, what toxic waste that powers a toilet? What that's, a magnetic ring? A that... magnetic ring that to, that's probably the first uh, break in reality. <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I but they, I, I felt like everything was re. I say everything was real, but like. I guess the characters were real. Like it mm-hmm. was, it wasn't like you had this super zany, crazy, insane kid. Like Melvin was this really annoying kid. Yep. Um, we all knew the pranksters, or the, the pranksters, or the whatever. really mean principal, prin- prince, principal, the mundane, monotone teacher. That's very true. Yeah. 
just um obviously i think professor poopy pants was a little bit of the exception but i think that's what drives the story but for the most part all the characters were definitely like oh yeah okay i know that i I know the boring lunch lady and stuff well i guess (laughs) the the lusty lunch lady i guess i don't know she had pretty blue eyes she had pretty (laughs) he's like you have a really pretty blue eye (laughs) oh thanks you noticed pulls her hair wow two two. (laughs) wow so um but yeah that was good um i don't know i just i think you know i i it's kind of difficult to go more and more i mean we've already been talking for about half hour now so (laughs) i i i I don't really have much to say else other than like you know I, i really hope that they do another one i thought it was a really nice movie um i i definitely i i forget what would do? Did they say the animation suit? Did you catch what animation oh, studio? Oh no, was I didn't. It? Let me find out. So, real quick. I don't know because I'd, I'd be really because if this is their first project uh, going forward, um, a a my b a minus a you got an a good <laughs> job you got an a pants. a minus <clears throat> we'll say quarter. we'll say okay. a minus. Do do we have um, do we have a company blank? Um, Hoyts Hoyts H O Y T S. Do they do anything else? No, that's movie time entertainment oh. company, I guess. <laughs> well, it would be animation studio. Or that too. Probably be a better way to um, look it up. DreamWorks. Was it DreamWorks? DreamWorks and Scholastic Entertainment. Oh, it was DreamWorks, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Wow, DreamWorks is a thing. Yeah. Wow, I feel so stupid. I'm like, I'm really glad that there's this indie animation <laughs> studio trying to... Wow, I'm so stupid. Wow, did Dream... Was... What was the last movie that DreamWorks did? Sorry, I know you just put your phone down. No, you're like, cool. Just... Let's all just look up DreamWorks. Dream... Just... Wow. Because they did... I remember they did do DreamWorks at the very Animation beginning. Movies, okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, I don't think I've seen How it. to Train Your Dragon, The Croods, all of the Shrek movies. Yeah, but like that um, was back in 2012. Madagascar. Again, still like... Well, How to Train Your Dragon 2 was in 2014. Puss in Boots, Ants. But but I think how the to train... boss baby. Oh, they did do the boss baby. <laughs> All the kung okay. fu panda movies. But okay, but the th- other than the boss baby, I think like the kung fu panda, Shrek, uh, How to Train Your Dragon. That's like 2014. Mega Mind was 2010. Yeah. Yeah, it was like so they haven't done anything um, in a few years other than this yeah. and. Wow. The kung okay. fu panda movies were pretty recent. Um, mm, they're coming maybe. out with the How to Train Your Dragon. Of course. Three in 2019, The Croods number two in 2017. I don't know the Croods. I never. Yeah, it's like cavemen. cavemen yeah, stuff, but I never watched whatever. it. So. Um, they're coming with the Madagascar four cheese. Wow. Movies okay. In 2018 Shrek four just... D. My gosh. How does that even I'm excited mean? for Shrek four D. <laughs> But uh, all the Christmas specials. Yeah, I completely forgot about DreamWorks. DreamWorks is a thing. Well, because it's like, I feel like, you know, with uh, at least Pixar and uh, Disney and now Illumination, they're pumping out just their newer IPs. Mm -hmm. So um, DreamWorks, I'm glad that, I'm very glad that DreamWorks uh, handled it very well. And, Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if they're just doing like Shrek, the next one, Madagascar, the next one, The Croods, the next one, and they're not coming out, I think because Boss Baby is just the newest original and i think that's yeah. just gonna be a one shot well it's already out it's already been oh, out yeah, that's and how, gone is it's it? coming gone oh is it really yep oh okay for i'm like so behind yeah, alec baldwin is the voice of the yeah. baby yeah mm-hmm. so um, how original <laughs> i mean it's it is what it is but i i i i'll i i, I don't know maybe that's a red box movie because i i definitely want to saw it i was just like oh that's an interesting that's I, where are they gonna go from there who knows i'm kind of i kind of want to see it i don't want to spend 11 dollars or no. whatever on it so plus gas and food just that's to, true that's very true to add to on take to your expenses. girlfriend to a movie where alec baldwin plays an animated baby <laughs> <laughs> you know it would have been it would have been better if they did that live action and they had just alec baldwin in a in a bonnet and, and like they... voice him over with like christopher walken <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious uh, we need to get on that we need to go tell yeah, snl someone from dreamworks someone from dreamworks get in contact with snl <laughs> let's make this thing um but yeah i don't know i I, I was hoping for a little more, but I mean, we covered kind of the the movie, the story, the mm-hmm. animation. Can you think of anything else? Um, Where they're gonna go from here? No, I, I hope they're. I I didn't see anything for uh, Captain Underpants two. I'm um, I'm sure if we there's some some subreddit somewhere in yeah. the deep dark internet, but um, I don't know. I I I kind of feel bad because it's like this is a half hour, <laughs> not even a can't even make it to the full hour. 
It said the first epic movie. So. That is true. They said the first. Okay, so there's a there's a essay or an article from the Hollywood Reporter uh-huh. and Captain Underpants and the new push to make cheaper animated movies. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, because I guess I, I don't know thirty eight million dollars. Oh, that's true. Versus animated movie. Pixar. Like if we were to do like Inside Out. Oh, I'm sure that was budget, like. Like I'm sure it was. Got to be in the hundreds, right? 175 million. Wow. Okay. And so I, I bet Despicable Me is probably right up there. Wow. Okay. So that really, when they did the Fliporama, yeah, Despicable Me was only 69 million. So wow. Dang. I guess. Well, I guess Pixar and Disney kind of. Well, they have the higher. Beyond, yeah. Right. But that's that that makes a lot more sense and it's a lot funnier because they literally when they did the Fliporama scene, they're like, <laughs> for budget reasons, <laughs> we're gonna do the Fliporama. That wow, okay, that makes because that was like maybe that what a couple minutes, now. yeah, a couple minutes. That was <laughs> that a joke's a lot funnier. Full on, that's good. I really, that's really funny now. Now we're, I'm gonna have to re-watch, re-watch it. this. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're well, guys, we're gonna rewatch this again and then yep, we'll be go back. back in a few. <laughs> talk about what we uh, learned, what we missed, what we new things. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, this is, and I guess, I guess it's, I guess it's more difficult just because this was just kind of an animated comedy, right. and it's not like. We're doing, you know, The Departed or whatever. Right. I'm sure if we were to watch the movie we were supposed to watch tonight, that's we'd true. Be oh yeah, for a lot longer. Yeah, folks, um, it, we would have watched Whiplash and we would have talked about Whiplash. But you should have just texted me. I have it at home. I I it's didn't okay. think about it. Yeah, no, okay. I I know. I, I, you know, I probably should have brought it just in case. Yeah, that's true. You so should have. It's, it's all your it's fault. It's all on me. It's I all know. Blake. Golly. No, I just I got home. I got home and I was just like, man, I am really tired because I stayed out late going bowling. Oh. Okay, we're we're bowling? done with we're done with the uh, uh, Captain, Captain Underpants, Underpants, and now we're gonna be just talking about life for just a second. We went bowling. Um, yeah, went bowling. Um, Sunday nights they have uh, I go with Robert, and at the Plano Super Bowl they have, have I met Robert. I think you have. You probably have. You should have. I think. Has he been on one of the podcasts? I don't think you've been on the same podcast. So okay, well, but, but anyways, <laughs> uh, he's my roommate, or I guess technically I'm his. We're all each other's roommates. Anyways, uh, they have it's like uh from i think eight o'clock till where'd you go playing a super bowl it's off of 75 in park parker park somewhere oh, there okay. um but no they have from like eight o'clock till about mid- midnight ish i think give or take um like a dollar fifty bowling per game mm-hmm. so you just go damn all right yeah so um we went and I'm like learning how to do the curve and everything, and I'm gonna get like I don't know. I hate it because I'm gonna now have to buy bowling shoes because no, like yeah, you are no, not. I am because it's like you can get them for like maybe twenty five bucks, give or take. Okay. And to rent shoes, it's like five dollars. How so, often are you gonna? How often do you plan on going bowling? I, at least once or twice a week. Oh damn! Okay, so yeah, this is a this thing is, now. Yeah, no, like I'm. Um, if I can improve my form and stuff like that, because I know Robert and a couple of his friends were actually legitimately talking Trying to about start a league or whatever, or yeah, join, just joining a bowling league. Oh, cool. And so, um, they said that if you That'd can get consistently above a hundred, uh, yeah, you're, then you're definitely golden. you need to try try out for the bowling league. Yeah, but yeah, that's, try out. I think you can maybe just start your own team of. Oh, I don't know. Sandlot bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. I guess I guess whenever they say. When is is there a bowling season? Is that a thing? Or is it <laughs> I don't just... think so. <laughs> the, the the offshoot sports. There's like a, a table tennis season and bowling season, a billiard season, yeah, a darts season. Yeah, yeah like they're all That's bar sports. I, like how? I guess for regular sports, yeah, you know, you have you have to have time to let your body heal That's and true. get stronger and stronger. Yeah, That's true. Versus, you know, bowling. I don't know. <laughs> I got a cramp. I can't bowl. No, Jimmy. No. The, the air dryer isn't working. We need to... <laughs> that's true. I I've learned to really appreciate the air dryer. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. Like that's that's some good that's some good shit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I we're gonna been bowling in a minute, dude. Yeah, no, dude, you're totally welcome. Um, because it's literally show up and they've got a crap ton of lanes and we just bowl. We usually bowl maybe three or four games and then oh, cool. call it for the night. But um. You know, it's it's really fun. And How expensive is the beer there? It's actually pretty cheap. I think you can get like a pitcher for like fifteen bucks. Cool. Yep, I'm in. Oh, okay. All right, there it is. Not even, <laughs> not even that. So, um, yeah, no, they have they have a, they have a fully staffed bar and they've got food and stuff. I haven't cool. tried any of their food, but I'm sure it's okay at mm-hmm. best. Um, it's how you're not expecting three you're not ex- forks, yeah, like a right, keg or something, right? But um, but yeah, no, definitely something I'm um 
looking forward to going forward. But it's like doing these podcasts and doing work and doing extra stuff. And then it's like, oh, let's add bowling into the mix Sunday nights. <laughs> Yay. Um, but yeah, that's my life now. It's just a constant cycle of doing new things. Yeah. So I'm really sad, though. I, got, I, I went kayaking once, and then I caught the fever, and then I didn't have anyone to go kayaking with. I know we talked about it for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, weren't we supposed to? Something like that. I don't know what happened, but I, I want to go. I never got a text. I That's think, what happened. And, whoa, hey now, hey now. Because <laughs> originally you wanted to do like a river. Yeah, so river at the San, at, yeah, Sandy Lake, there's a, there's a, a you can go kayak the Trinity. But what about like a, just a regular lake? Because that's what I was wanting to Because there's okay, one so in Lewisville. you just wanted to stay out there and just, and just row, row and row. And, row, yeah, row your boat. Row down back the and that's it? Yeah, well, I guess. I don't know. I mean. I want some action adventure, adventure. Yeah. i mean Some i'm that's fine i'm down with it. but it's like nowadays it's just like i'm gonna be busy so maybe we yeah. can shoot for like some weekend or yeah something. We'll when it, probably it. when it's not cold you know no we have to do it when it's cold we get a bundle up in jackets and <laughs> some wool and sweaters. wool sweaters and then if and then that's the thing that's that's the dress that's, up like lewis and clark <laughs> and if because if you get wet then it's gonna suck because it's gonna be cold and, and the water's gonna be, be cold it'll yeah be funny yeah and then we'll get con- uh, contract you can contract malaria or what do you hyper, what do <laughs> pneumonia you, pneumonia <laughs> that's <laughs> you could i guess I, I, sure i mean if there's a mosquito or something in I the guess. water you, you know, that would really TV, suck so. if you kept contract pneumonia and malaria at the same time yeah i'm pretty sure it's a almost is guaranteed that death? death sentence right you really think so I think, probably I it depends probably. on how strong your immune system is but if that's you're true we're 21 years old we're in the prime of our right. lives so oh we'll, we'll, we, we better i don't we know better I, survive. I funnel cheeseburgers down my gullet <laughs> so like i don't know how healthy my body is as of this point so <laughs> your body's just kind of slumped over just like, dude i can't do this. i can't do it. you're gonna give me pneumonia and <laughs> why, malaria why are you taking the stairs no <laughs> um but yeah that that uh about does it we hit the 40 minute mark so at least we were we able talk- to 38 minutes Tar- on uh, Captain Underpants. Underpants. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty good. I, I We probably could have summed it up in like 10 minutes. Be like, yeah, it was all right. Okay, bye. Yep, Thanks, it everybody. Was, it was okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, okay, so then uh, would you watch this movie again? Not obviously not now, but like you had a group setting. Would you watch it again? Yeah, why not? Everyone's just like, yeah, let's watch Captain Underpants. It'd be funny. And then you're secretly like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes i wouldn't be you know i wouldn't get goosebumps when, oh i would get goosebumps when the first title came <laughs> on but you know i'd be like and eh, f it let's watch captain underpants let's do it all right okay it's not yeah. it's not like uh the spongebob movie which one the second one obviously with sandy <laughs> i haven't is seen a... that since really you haven't seen no. it I've, i think i've seen it at least two other times really is it oh, still yeah. funny as hell it's still great okay. i love it it's... i can watch the first one over and over again that's very true because i never it... get tired of seeing spongebob and patrick hammered that is I true. That's the funniest thing. That is hilarious. That is, yeah. And even then, um, I don't know. Did you ever play the video game, the SpongeBob movie video game? Um, no, I yeah. played a Nickelodeon video game where it was like okay. Fairly Odd Parents mixed with really um, Danny Phantom with SpongeBob oh. with Jimmy oh. Neutron. It was like oh. this just a collab. Yeah, yeah. Where you like had to go through this campaign and with oh, that's certain cool. characters and whatnot. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, that was fun. That um, I think the the spongebob movie one came out on the not dreamcast the gamecube and so oh yikes <laughs> yeah um i just i just honestly i just remember fond memories of like watching the spongebob movie and then playing the game and then because like the game was actually pretty good like yep. it was a solid game um i don't know i don't know how much of its nostalgia but then but i just i legitimately remember like having trouble with some with mm-hmm. some levels and it's like difficult it's a challenge yeah. and it's like they were able to have their own unique spin on it mm-hmm. and so um, I don't know. I just I remember because they had like they gave I don't know. I don't. This isn't the SpongeBob corner, but um, but yeah, no. I that gives me that gives you a good idea though. Whenever you and your you have your like gaming podcast or whatever, revisit, oh, that's true. like revisit old, old games. Like I remember I used to play the Lord of the Rings Return of the King game. Like, yes, all the time. And yes. I revisited it like a year ago. Oh, did it suck? No, I. Well, okay. It was no. It was still fun. Okay. Because the whole time I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. But I got through it in like 30 minutes. But oh that's really? Not, yeah, that's not okay. the point. And I'm not good at video games at all. But I just remember as a kid sitting there just playing in the recliner with my buddy next oh, yeah. to me, and we're just I'm no I'm Aragorn. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> just constantly going back and forth. Oh, I just love playing Gimli. I was just like, oh my gosh, Gimli was my shit. But um, no, I uh, I was I I was big on that, but I was bigger on Two Towers. I don't know, I don't know yeah, what one, the difference was. I really liked that a lot more. I think well, because I remember Lord of the Rings: Return of the King on PS2. It starts with Gandalf at 
Helm's Deep. That's yes. how the game starts. Yes, yes, yes. And, and so I, I, I think I watched my one of my friends down the street uh-huh. on his Xbox play. I didn't, I never had an sure. Xbox play Two Towers. On, okay, maybe it was on his PC. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, but um. Well, and I remember watching him PC. play, going like, "Oh my gosh, I I don't know, I could never do any of this in my life. This yeah. is so complicated." Oh, there was um, the 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 actual battle of Helm's Deep, uh, at least the night portion, mm-hmm. was really difficult for me because you had because uh, one you had to manage, and they had a rule where it was like if there was an, enough urukai on in uh, on the top of the tower, you'd lose, and so you right. have to kick down ladders kick down while ladders. while killing urukai, and they were difficult, and they got increasingly harder, and then even more ladders came up, and mm-hmm. so I just know that for, sounds like it'd be fun though. Oh yeah, it was it was really fun. Um, did you get to slide down the staircase on a shield like Legolas? I don't think so, unfortunately. <sighs> well, but I'm not um, it. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> reason why you'd breaker. ever play it. It was a deal breaker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was it was a really fun game. Golly, now it's like. Because if 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 it was on PC, because you know, now I'm gonna have to go on Steam and just mm-hmm. like say, all right, gonna buy it, even though it's real <laughs> shit. And it's probably like ten dollars each. I don't care. I'll spend thirty dollars on all of them. Because yeah, the I remember the original the Fellowship. That was a different game because um, I just remember at least when I first got it, and I couldn't get out of the sh- the Shire. Like you had to, it was a combination of like sneaking around and then like not getting caught. And there's, I just specifically remember being very vivid and I was very like, I was sc- legitimately scared and mm-hmm. I was hiding and like, you know, you didn't want to get caught because then you'd lose or get killed right. or whatever. And I was legitimately scared. Cause I was like, okay, I know I'm safe here, but if I move, I may get caught. And I just, I just remember turning off the PlayStation. I was like, all right, I'm done. Yep. <laughs> That's it. So and I don't remember if I even beat it or went back to it or whatever. I just remember that. I don't remember scene. ever there being a fellowship video game yeah it, it was. was it was it was it was i mean it was cool it was an issue. it would have been awesome once you got to the like the last level or whatever that's or true. when you had to go and fight the borog or whatever his name was that's true it was but, actually um go, go ahead so i'm sorry for interrupting no I, that's all I oh that was it yeah. um there was a uh spin-off where you played it, it was it was an interesting concept because it was kind of like a turn-based sort of final fantasy style game mm-hmm. where um, you played a group of adventurers who was essentially following the fellowship. Mm-hmm. And so as they were going through each event and stuff like that, you kind of saw the aftermath. Oh, cool. So, um, all the damage that, yeah, the exactly. Did. Yeah. So, and then, you know, there's still monsters and baddies and I forget why you were following them or like, I don't remember the story, but it was kind of cool. So that is cool. Well, now we've increased our time even more and we should probably end this so that, because we go from Captain Underpants to SpongeBob to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's a pretty dynamic podcast, yes, if you ask is. me. So, um, yeah, Blake, any uh, closing remarks or anything like that? Um, make sure to keep your <laughs> bank account and your <laughs> debit and credit cards safe. Yeah, uh, don't. Oh, uh, anytime you try and swipe or put your credit card in anything, make sure to give it a little jingle. Try and yeah. pull a little bit. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's not a card reader. Mm-hmm. Um, very important to learn that. And don't let people bump into you because yes. then, A, they'll try and steal your stuff, just physically steal it. Or, B, they'll just uh, try and do that electro reader. Right. Just don't go outside. Yeah, <laughs> just stay inside. Right. That's it. <laughs> That, that's indoors all. In, back to spongebob and indoors, that's it <laughs> indoors <laughs> take it away <laughs> um all right so lightning round um for halloween would you ever dress up as captain underpants i have the body for it so yeah i would say yes as well just because <laughs> i have to expired. cover up the tattoos but yeah that's okay <laughs> And that uh, does it for this episode. I uh, hope we uh, entertained you at least a little bit. Um, I know definitely coming out of this, you're a better person. You're a more rounded individual. <laughs> really getting the full deep dive of what the Captain Underpants movie <laughs> is. Um, really re- let it resonate. It just, yeah. You you need to like treat it like a fine wine. You know, get a little, right. s- a little sip of it and just contemplate Swish it. it and, mouth, and just to... understand what we're talking mm-hmm. about. You know, right. maybe, maybe take another sip. Re-listen to it right. and... Maybe you're gonna catch something that we said that mm-hmm. you didn't realize before, you know. Or just chug the whole bottle or, and enjoy it. Yeah, just fucking go. We, that, that's what you have to do for this episode. Just you got to get through it. That's get it. it. There's <laughs> there's nothing other than surface level here. Just you chug through it. That's it. Get that's it done. It. Turn it off. Never speak to this episode ever again. Yeah, that's oh, probably goodness. a better. Yeah, it's a much better, better. metaphor. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, again, appreciate you being on, Blake. Uh, I'm you. glad that you're my one true friend that won't ditch or bail. <laughs> Calling you out, people who were supposed to be here. You know who you are. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, appreciate it. And I uh, hope you guys have a great night. 
and everything. All right, peace. Hey, everybody. That's the end of the show. Really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, that's okay. Try again next episode. I mean, you can probably learn something. Law of averages, something like that, right? Anyways, this episode has been sponsored by Haven Cottage Investments. Really appreciate everything that they're doing. If you want to buy a home, sell a home, rent a home, lease a home, whatever it is, I don't know what you want to do, definitely get in contact with Sabrina Parker. She knows what she is doing, all right? She's like some kind of financial investment genius, okay? All of her contact information, you got her email, her phone number, anything at all to get in contact with her down below. Haven Cottage Investments is awesome, okay? Definitely going to need to take advantage of that because if you don't, well, that just kind of sucks for you. But if you mention the podcast, you know, just mention the One More Podcast podcast when you're contacting her, either via phone or email, you'll get half off the commission rate. You know, that's good. You know, that's more money in your pocket. So, yeah, give her a call. Give her a shout. Anything you can. It's definitely worth a try. It's definitely worth a call, at least. Figure out if it's even right for you. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed again the podcast. And, again, Haven Cottage Investments. It's what they do that helps me do what I do. So again, if you want to show some love and support, definitely check them out, give them a call, everything like that. I don't know how many times I can say it. I don't know how many times I've said it, but I'll keep saying it because that's what I'm here for. All right, guys, have a great night, day, whenever you're listening to this podcast. I don't know. All right, peace.